I might lose some friends over this one. I think we're overdue for a new aesthetic movement. It would be tacky to call it that. Obviously, the new something is a very new millennium naming convention, and like the habit of naming everything for the last 200 years modern, it would age poorly for being defined by its lack of age. But I've been meandering around the space of politics and emerging media, especially anti-capitalist politics, for over a decade now, and I'm finding myself increasingly disturbed by the lack of direct attention given to aesthetics. The internet leftism fandom puts a great deal of energy into unpacking and explicating the aesthetics of the right, but overwhelmingly rejects the idea of being intentionally aesthetic itself. The favorite intra-community epithet is LARPer, people who want to feel like they're part of a movement. Imagine if instead of telling them they're wrong for wanting that, you told them the rules of the game. The typical response to this is that the consequences of politics are not merely aesthetic. That treating real people's real lives and real struggles as media assets and narrative beats is grotesque and dehumanizing. This is true. It's also been true the whole time, and has so far not brought to a grinding halt the past 500 years of grotesque dehumanization. Capitalism, for good or ill, is the river in which we sink or swim, and capitalism is concerned only with the aesthetic. The reason the civil rights and Black Lives Matter movements affected public opinion was because they provided a way to package suffering as a media asset. There are no values at the heart of capitalist messaging. In fact, the whole point of capitalist messaging is to replace the notion of values with the value of money, an abstract terminal goal with no concrete material function. The reason that hippies and punks were treated as threats to the state was because they provided a narrative identity through which a person could enter into having values, a way to choose something other than money. The social mechanic of fandom can't be used to radicalize people into anti-capitalism. Platforms don't radicalize people into political extremes. They radicalize people into consumer demographics. As it happens as a very harmonious relationship between fascist consumption and fascist activism, there is no such thing as a liberatory consumer choice. The internet leftism fandom is not a political movement. It is at its best a mildly effective market demographic, and at its worst an enthusiastically performative antagonist for the narratives constructed by the alt-right. The aim of an aesthetic movement is to make the world more beautiful in the eyes of its beholders. At present, it seems, the people most interested in doing that want to do it by limiting who counts as a beholder and what is and isn't seen. There's no reason that should be an achievable goal given the growth in communication technology of the past 52 years. The internet is a heteroglossic explosion bursting through the illusion of unified voice and vision in a maximalist cacophony of perspectives in both authorship and curation. Media activist efforts to achieve a unified voice and vision reject that one glowing asset to insist instead upon erasing or demonizing the forms of beauty observed by the people they propose to save. People of good conscience trying to do the right thing hasn't been working, and I'm beginning to think that like happiness, justice can't be achieved by trying for justice. Outside the emerging media space, there are people doing the work and doing it well, but the lip service paid to those communities by the internet leftism fandom manifests in clumsy, disruptive, and unsustained attempts at support. In the same paradoxical way that man's pursuit of mastery over the earth has led to its imminent destruction, the pursuit of mastery over the public destroys publics. For the time being, I'll take no further part in it, and will instead be focusing my attention on the rhetorics and aesthetics of emerging media.